I recently finished up a walnut sideboard that featured some walnut live edge and I had material left over. So when you got this beautiful stuff sitting around, you try to think of ideas of what you could do with it. Well, in our kitchen, we're a little bit pressed for space and I wanted to bring the knives out of a drawer and put them in a location on the wall that's a lot more convenient. So I figured if we could take a piece of that live edge and make a cool little knife holder out of it, that'd be a fun project. So that's what we're gonna do today. So here's the scrap piece that I had. It's got a nice live edge on it. Kind of looks like the Colorado mountains. Huh, I expected the Rocky Mountains to be a little rockier than this. So I want to embed the magnets, but then cover them with a thin layer of wood. This is easier to do when you've got a regular board, but when you have a live edge, the kerf of the blade removes enough stock to offset that live edge. So we'll have to compensate for that with the glue up. Normally I might drum sand these pieces, but I don't want to contribute more to the offset, so I'll sand by hand just to smooth the surface. Next, I'll lay out for the magnets. I know a lot of magnetic holders utilize long magnetic bars, but what I happen to have in my possession are rare earth magnets in both the disc shape and the cylinder shape, so I'll be using some of each. The spacing here is about two inches between each magnet set. At the drill press, I'll use a half inch Forstner bit to create a nice flat bottom hole for each magnet. The easiest and fastest way I know to pull the magnets off the stack is to drop them into the hole and then slide the stack to the side. But you still need to be careful as the stack will definitely grab the other magnets if you get too close. Oh, <laughs> on the last one, man. The last one, come on. Oh yeah, there it is. Because the magnets are a nice snug fit and they'll be covered with another piece of wood, there's really no need to glue each individual magnet. Once covered, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> Get out. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Get, no. Get out of here. So I guess that's going to be a, a thing in our videos now. With the glue applied, the top veneer is going to shift around a lot. So I take my time adding clamps and a call, making sure the live edge is smooth and any offset ends up at the bottom of the board. We can clean that up later. Originally, I thought I'd be attaching this thing to the wall with screws, so I used one of the offcut pieces to cut some plugs. I didn't wind up doing that, but here's some footage of me making plugs anyway. Well, sorry to interrupt your video, but I gotta tell you guys something really important. You know that we have t-shirts like this one? They're pretty awesome, and they come in, in a wide variety of exotic colors like black and also black. So if you're interested, head to TWWstore.com, pick up a new t-shirt. We appreciate the support as always. And let's get back to that video. With the glue dry, I can scrape and sand the live edge flush. With a live edge, you always have that sapwood layer right under the bark, and that stuff is a creamy white color. So the joint line is gonna be visible no matter what we do. I'm just gonna do my best to disguise it as much as possible. Now on the bottom edge, we have that little offset to deal with, so I'll scrape away the glue and then give it a pass over the jointer. And as you can see, I was kind of surprised. Uh, even on the back side, those magnets are doing their job. Now I'll clean up both ends and sand it all smooth. A light round over. And we're ready for some finish. Bumble Shoots is what I've been using lately for food contact stuff, and you could save yourself 10% using my code TWW10 at checkout. Now back at home, Nicole recommended some command strips, so I decided to give them a shot on the tile backsplash.
thanks, Nicole. A quick trip to Lowe's, and now I've got some Gorilla double-sided tape. A few strips on the back. Maybe more than a few, and we'll try this again. Okay, that's not coming down anytime soon. And here come the knives. And the purple shears. And that's it, simple project. Happy cooking.